Welcome to JJ Sports Talk, the channel for the sports you love. In this video, I'm going to talk about the college football playoff semifinal games. I'm going to talk about the Peach Bowl between the LSU Tigers and the Oklahoma Sooners. And then I'm going to talk about the Fiesta Bowl between the Ohio State Buckeyes and the Clemson Tigers. And then I'm going to talk about the national championship and the teams that made it there and my thoughts and opinions on those teams and who will win. Hey guys, and welcome back to JJ Sports Talk. And, uh... Gosh dang it, man. Oh, I'm just very disappointed right now. I just can't believe what I just saw. Um, I think you know what I'm probably going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about the college football playoffs and uh, the reviews of the semifinal games and my preview for the championship game. And uh, as you can tell, I am very disappointed uh, for reasons that you can probably guess. Um, I'll go over everything about the two semifinal games. But uh, first, I'm going to start it off with my trivia question. So my trivia question is, when was the last time that LSU made it to the championship game? And then a little bonus one is, when's the last time they won the national championship? Because a little hint, the last time they made it, they didn't win. So I'll give that to you at the end of the video. But uh, first, I'll start out with my first semifinal game. So the first semifinal game was between the number four seed Oklahoma Sooners and the number one seed LSU Tigers. And I'm just going to start by saying this game was complete domination by one team and one team only. And that team was the LSU Tigers. The LSU Tigers completely and utterly handled the Oklahoma Sooners. They, I, as you can tell by my, predi my predictions, I said that Oklahoma's defense was just not good enough to compete with LSU's offense. And that was completely true today. Or not technically not today, but yesterday, or yesterday by the time I'm making this video. But, uh... The, I mean, when Joe Burrow has seven touchdown passes in the or touchdowns in the first half, you know something's something's wrong. And uh, LSU, I knew that LSU's offense was. We all knew LSU's offense was good. It was the big question with Oklahoma's defense: Were they going to come up? Were they going to have enough energy and and like enough umph to compete with LSU? Is what I'm trying to say. And they didn't. It, it was just complete domination. Joe Burrow. Is just proving time and time again why he won the Heisman and why he's the best player in college football right now. And that's true. I mean, argue with me all you want. He's the best player in college football. And um, him and LSU have just proved time and time again that they are the best team in college football. And I, I stand by that. They're a very, very, very good football team. And I'll talk about Oklahoma real quick. i got to give them credit. They, have, they make it to the semifinal again. But... They just keep getting stuck playing the best teams. And uh, until the Big 12 in Oklahoma figures out how to play defense, it's just going to continue to be the same thing over and over again. Is that the defense in the Big 12 is just not good. And they, they have offense for, offense for days, and that might contribute to the fact they don't play a lot of defense in the Big 12. But until Oklahoma can figure out how to play defense, it's going to be rough every time they make it to the playoffs. And that just holds true for any Big 12 team that makes it to the playoffs. And... Uh, Shout out to the Oklahoma Sooners and Lincoln Riley this year. They had an excellent year, and Jalen Hurts had an excellent year becoming a Highlands and finalist and transferring to Oklahoma and really bringing that program to the height of uh, it's been this decade and uh, helping them get back to the playoffs, even though it didn't finish out how they really wanted it to be. So o LSU ended up winning, I think the final score was 63-28. I could be wrong, but if it's not, it's around that area. Um Complete domination by LSU, and uh, yeah, they, they are in the national championship in New Orleans now, so uh, ho hopefully they can uh, do good there, but I'll talk about my predictions after I talk about the next semifinal game, and that was the, so LSU ends up winning the, I think it was, what was LSU in, I think they were in the Peach Bowl, so LSU ends up winning the Peach Bowl, is that right, is that right, something like that, I don't know what LSU, the bowl, exactly what LSU was in, but they end up winning their bowl and uh, getting into the um, national championship. So now the next semifinal game. It hurts. Uh, the Fiesta Bowl between the number two seed, Ohio State, and the number three team, Clemson. First, I'm going to start off by saying how excellent of a game this was. It was one of the best college football games I've watched. And I'm going to try to stay... As positive as I can, because I'm not talking about Ohio State, I'm talking about college football. So I'm going to try to stay 
I'm not going to say neutral, but as honest as I can be. So first I'll start by saying, um, great game, uh, very, very, uh, fitting for that game. People are calling it the best semi-final game yet, I would definitely agree with that. That was one of the most exciting games I've watched, and definitely better than the game that they had in 2016 where they got, where Ohio State lost to Clemson 31 nothing. But, obviously, you can tell by my reaction at the beginning of the video, it didn't go in Ohio State's favor. Clemson did end up winning. But I, I will attribute to that. I'll start by talking about Clemson. Clemson was down early. They were down 16 nothing. Everyone was counting them out. Uh, Ohio State was playing very well. But credit to Brett Venables, the defensive coordinator, for really making adjustments in Dabo Sweeney to correct anything they did. Trevor Lawrence is a great quarterback, is a great player. And he is going to have – and he's going to definitely be a top pick next year because he has to come back and play again. But – He's shown, uh, he's shown me and my family and everyone that was watching the game that he is one of the best players in college football. And he is a great quarterback, and he he played excellent. And it, it wasn't just Trevor Lawrence, so Travis Etienne had an excellent game. And Clemson, and, like Ohio State, they both had a lot of injuries in that game, but they both they had a very excellent game. And they proved why they were the national champions last year and why they are on a, they just won 29 straight games. So they, they played an excellent game and uh, they did a great job adjusting to what Ohio State was doing and made some big plays. And that 94 yard drive at the end of the game was just excellent. And then the defensive stand at the end. So, uh, congrats to Clemson on making it to the uh, national championship. But now I'm going to talk about now I can go Ohio State fan after I talk about Clemson. So, if I'm Ohio State, c c congrats to the whole season. We had a great season. Uh, but uh, what I want to say is that there are a lot of things in that game that if they won Ohio State's way, that game could have been completely different. So then there's a, there's a couple of things that I saw that I'm going to mention right now that if they won Ohio State's way, the game could have been completely different. First, and maybe most of all, there's another one that could be first, the targeting call on Sean Wade. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and argue about rules, but that's definitely a very controversial call, and targeting is a very controversial subject anyway. But... A man, Trevor Lawrence, when Sean Wade's coming full speed at Trevor Lawrence to tackle him, and Trevor Lawrence squats down and lowers his head into Sean Wade, I mean, what's the dude going to do? And the targeting call and the tar and the play itself was really not that bad. And the fact that it's it's live speed and that the, Trevor Lawrence is 6'6", and Sean Wade's like six foot, and he's squatting down and putting his head into him, that's a big difference and a big play in the game, and that extending Clemson's drive which they ended up scoring on when it was 16 to nothing. I think it was 16 to nothing. I don't know. Something like that. But we were up in the game. That's a big turning point. And it frustrated me and a lot of people to see that play happen and how it changed the flow of the game. Ohio State had full control until that play happened. Completely frustrating. And I've heard all the experts saying that that targeting call was kind of baloney and that it shouldn't have been a targeting call. And Sean Wood should not have been ejected from the game. So that's my first issue. My second issue is in the second half the pass that Trevor Lawrence had to Justin Ross that he caught and clearly had a possession of that was stripped and then picked up by Jordan Fuller and returned for a touchdown that would have gave us the lead when Ohio State's offense was stalling. They called it a fumble on the field and called it a touchdown and then overturned it into an incomplete pass. That's something I just, it really haunts me is that they can just do that. It's like even half the announcers were saying that's, that it was a catch and a fumble. And then there was about one guy that was saying that he didn't really have possession. And they, and I, obviously, if you know this, if you're, like, really good at knowing the rules, is that if it's called on the field, it has to be indisputable evidence to overturn it. And I can tell you right now, if they called it a fumble and a touchdown on the field, the replay, what we were seeing, was not indisputable. He, the angle showed he had completely caught the ball, had possession, brought it down here, and then was stripped by, I think, Jeffrey Okuda was the one who stripped him, and then Jordan Fuller returned it. That's not clear evidence, and it's clearly caught and controlled, and you can listen to Kirk Herbstreit say it and Chris Fowler say it, that it's completely controlled. I mean, what else can you do? I mean, and then the last one's pretty obvious. I mean, that, that was my second one, but the last one's pretty obvious is that last play. We had a long drive at the end to take the lead, and then that last miscommunication by... Justin Fields and Chris Olave that 
when I watched it just went, I just went like this. That's not the ref's fault. That's not Clemson's fault. It's just miscommunication. It happens all the time. And just that just happened to be the play that ended the game for us and sent Clemson to the national championship. It just hurts to watch this game and see that we had a great season, but to be all for nothing and just to end that quickly and listening to Ryan Day and Justin Fields talk just hurts being a fan. But uh, congrats to Clemson. They ended up winning the game, and they have the right to go play for the national championship. Now, I said in my last video, I said, if you can't beat Clemson, you don't deserve to play for the national championship, and we didn't beat Clemson. So Clemson deserves to be in the national championship. And uh, now I can – just think to myself. I just thought about. I thought about right after the game. I'm like, what do we have? We, we we have plenty of talent coming in next year and returning next year. It just sucks for the seniors that have to leave behind. But just, that that's what it is for every team. For every team in the past playoffs. For every team in the past championships. All the way back to when college football started. It's the same thing, but it just happens that I have to accept it right now. So, uh, but now I get to talk about my uh, college football championship preview. So we have the number one seed LSU and the three seed Clemson. But throw those numbers out the door. It's the national championship, the Tigers versus the Tigers, LSU and Clemson. I'm just going to cut to the chase. What do I think is going to happen? LSU is a great football team. Clemson is a great football team. they both led by excellent quarterbacks, excellent coaches, excellent players. I mean, the first thing I want to point to is the receiving course. I mean, for LSU, you have Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Terrence Marshall, and then for Clemson, you have Justin Ross, T. Higgins, and guys like that. Amari Rogers, excellent receivers. My thing is, the big key in the game is going to be the defense. Whose defense is going to play better? Whose is going to step up and stop the other teams? I if Clemson's defense is going to have to play excellent to stop this offense. It is a one of the best offenses I've ever seen in college football history. And I said, yes, I said that. And that's what all the announcers are saying, too. It's, been, it's one of the best offensives they've ever seen. Clemson's defense is going to have to play excellent to stop it. I'm, I'm interested to see how that defense plays. And then Clemson's defense has proven they can be very good. And um, I want to see how they can stop LSU's offense. And then LSU's defense has proven time and time they can be good. But they're also going to have to make stops because... The way the Ohio, like the Ohio State game went, Ohio State had full control and then one play changed. And then plays just... Plays can change the game, and LSU has to limit those game-changing plays. And if they can, then the game will turn out their favor. But if Clemson's defense can stop their offense, and then their offense can make plays, it'll be Clemson's game. But the way I think it's going to go, I think LSU's offense is going to make the plays they need to play and the stops they need to stop. And my prediction is that in the end, it will be LSU winning the national championship. I think Clemson has proven it time and time again. They're a great team, and they proved it last year when they came and they beat Alabama, who was, everyone said was the best team in the country. And then Clemson, oh, Clemson's a good team, but they're not going to do it. It could be the same thing this year, but I don't think it'll be. I think LSU has proven in their seasoned veterans this year that they, they have the talent and they have the players and they have the coaches this year, and they, they, will have, they will play a great game. I don't think it'll be a blowout. It'll be a closer game, but... Uh, I think that it will be a good game, but LSU will win the national championship, and Clemson will be the runners-up, and uh, uh, it'll be a great game, but I think that LSU is going to end up taking the national championship home, and uh, not what I would have thought at the beginning of the year, but uh, that's what I'm thinking now, and I think that uh, it'll be a great ending to a great college football season despite everything else that's happened despite my team losing, but I think it'll be a great ending to this year. And uh, just to wrap it up, um, so LSU beat Oklahoma 63-28 in the Peach Bowl, I think. <laughs> Still not very sure on that, but I think I think that might be right. And then Clemson beat Ohio State, I think I didn't say earlier, but 29-23 in the Fiesta Bowl. And then those two are setting up the National Championship, which I said LSU is going to win the and down in New Orleans. Um, I don't really know if I have a final score prediction. Maybe. I think it'll be... 35 to 24 LSU maybe something like that. It'll be within within 17 14 points within that area. But LSU will win the national championship is my prediction to end the college football season. So that wraps up my video really to uh, talk about all these semifinal games and my championship predictions. But uh, I always have to wrap it up by giving you guys my trivia question. 
So my trivia question was, when was the last time LSU was in the national championship? And then when was the last time they won it? So the last time they were in the national championship was 2011, where they lost to the Alabama Crimson Tide in the national championship. And then the last time they won it was 2007, when they beat Ohio State in the national championship. But uh, that really wraps up my video. Um, again, just disappointing that Ohio State was not able to get it, which means me and Collins' predictions were wrong, <laughs> but uh, we did get LSU's right. But uh, good, great semifinal games, as predicted, really, except the Ohio State one. But uh, best of luck to both LSU and Clemson, and uh, hopefully it'll be a great national championship game, and I'll always have it. I'm going to have a championship game recap, and uh, yeah, thank you for watching JJ Sports Talk. Goodbye.